All right, here's the last video guide for the last lesson we're doing here in geometry this year. Very exciting. Um, and it's a short lesson on just the chapter 10 closure. So we're just going to be reviewing the chapter 10 concepts, um, only a few of them through the four problems that we're going to do here in the video and in the lesson. Um, and hopefully then we'll just set you off on to uh, the review assignment, which the review assignment will be the last assignment we give. Um, and hopefully some of the concepts in this video will help you do that. Uh, so like I said, we will have uh, four problems here today. And let's get started with the first one, 10-185. Uh, so 10-185 gives us this diagram on the right. And it says we need to assume that AD, this line AD, is tangent to the circle C at D. Um, and assume that each part is a separate problem. So A is a little bit different than B, and we can't, it's not going to build off of each other. Um, and I'm actually going to do, start here with part A. So if AD is 9, so I'm going to write some of this down. AD here is 9. AD is 9. I want to make that better. AD is 9. AB, so the whole thing, AB is 15. What is the area of C? Well, I know because AD, AD here is tangent at that point D, and I know BD um, is a diameter, and I know that that tangent is going to be, um, or it's tangent to that point D, and I know from a lesson in chapter 10 that that tangent line creates a 90 degree angle, and so really what I have here is a right triangle where I know two of the side lengths and I need to find the third side length. So this is going to become a Pythagorean theorem problem. Um, and what we'll have then is part A is um, because 15 is across from my 90 degree angle, 15 is my hypotenuse then. And so what I have is 9 squared plus b squared, because b squared is the other leg that we don't know, equals 15 squared, and I solve it for b. 9 squared is equal to 81, b squared stays b squared, and 15 squared is 225. Um, subtracting over 81, we get that b squared equals 144. Square root both sides, so it's just b and not b squared, and what we get is b being equal to 12. And so we know that this length here, this length here, BD, is equal to 12. Um, but we're looking for the area of the circle C. So if the diameter is 12, that means the radius, B to C here, is 6. And if we know that radius then is 6, we can find the area because area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. And that means the area of this specific circle is pi times 6 squared. Again, we found 12 was the um, diameter by saying that was a right triangle. And then we get the 6 because um, radius is always half the diameter. So that's kind of where that 6 is coming from again. Um, and then when I finish this problem out, I get that this is 36 pi. And I want to make sure I put my labels on it. Uh, we're working in centimeters. So this is 36 pi centimeters squared because it's an area. And that would be your answer for part A and 185. Part B, I'm going to erase because, it, like it says, each part is separate. So I'm going to erase the work from part A because it's not going to apply to part B. And we'll see if the length of the radius of uh, circle C is 10 centimeters. So the radius, and we'll say C to D here, is 10 centimeters. And the measure of ED is 30 degrees. What are the measures of EB and this line AD? All right. Uh, so the first thing we're going to say is um, the first answer to part B, because there's really two answers that are going to go into this, but the first one's a little bit quicker. We know that BD, BD here is a diameter of the circle, which means it's cutting the circle in half. There is 360 degrees in a circle. So in half a circle, in half a circle, there is 180 degrees. Well, 30 of that's already taken by um, ED, so we got to get rid of that 30, which means there is 150 left for EB. There's 150 degrees left for EB. 
Another way to think about it is if EB, if EB is 150 and ED is 30, then 30 plus 150 gives you that 180, which is half the circle. So that's your first part or first answer for part B. It says, what is the measure of uh, that arc EB? Well, the measure of that arc EV is 150 degrees. Uh, the second one works a little bit more trigonometry, which is why I actually really like it. Um, and it brings a couple more concepts in from when we were working on inscribed angles. So the second part is we figured out the measure of EB. Now we need to figure out the length of AD down here. Let's figure out this length AD. Um, and again, what we have is a right triangle. We know that the radius here is 10, which means the diameter, if the radius there is 10, that means this whole diameter, BD, is 20, because diameter is twice as big as radius. So we know that the this part right here is 20. We know that the measure of the arc here, the measure of arc ED is 30, which means this angle B is 15. Because if you remember back to earlier in chapter 10, we said the inscribed angle, the inscribed angle that creates the arc is always half the measure of what the arc is. So if the arc is 30, that means the inscribed angle that's creating it has to be 15, has to be half the size of it. And so what we know then, I'm gonna get rid of the 30 now because we used it. We have an angle, we have an angle, we have a right triangle, and we have a side. So we're gonna be able to use trigonometry here to figure out that length AD. And so if 15 is our angle, AD is opposite, and 20 is adjacent. Opposite adjacent tells me this is a tangent problem. And so to do the problem, AD, to figure out that length AD, we have to um, do the tangent. Um, one second, I'm gonna set that equal again. The tangent of 15, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Opposite we don't know, so we're gonna call it x. Adjacent is 20. So tangent of 15 equals x over 20. Uh, cross multiply here, one times x, tangent of 15 times 20, and we will get, oops, x equals the tangent of 15 times 20, which let me bring up my calculator quick. Uh, the tangent of 15 times 20 gives you an answer of 5.36 is the length of, I should call, I call it X, but that's the length of AD is 5.36. Um, and I really like that problem. Like I said, uh, using inscribed angles, um, using the idea of radius and diameter, and then using trigonometry. All right, last one for 10-185. Uh, and what we have is if the, uh, oh, I'm going to erase what I was doing so that, again, in these problems, uh, they don't really go hand in hand, so we got to erase it here. So if the measure of EB is 86 degrees, so EB here is 86 degrees, and BC is 7 centimeters, so BC is 7 centimeters, we need to find the length of EB right here. All right. It's actually pretty similar to the last problem. Um, what we need to know here, um, and they don't tell it, which I'm kind of upset about, but this is a right angle right here. This is a right angle here. And so this triangle BED is a right triangle, and that really helps. And so what we know, and we did it last time, is if EB is 86, this inscribed angle D, D is the inscribed angle that creates that arc, it's going to be half the size of that arc measure. So if that's 86, then angle D right here needs to be 43 degrees because it's got to be half the measure. All right. We also know that now we know that measure of the triangle. Um, we know that if BC, that's a radius is seven, then we know this whole length here needs to be 14 because if seven's the radius, 14's got to be the diameter because diameter is twice the size of radius. And then we really have this set up now. We have an angle that we can use. We have a side length we can use, and it's a right triangle, so we can use right triangle trigonometry. We are looking for EB, and so what we have is that's the opposite. So my angle is 43. That's across from it, so it's opposite. Um, and 14 over here is across from the 90 degrees, which means that's the hypotenuse. So what we have here 
is a opposite hypotenuse problem, and opposite hypotenuse is sine. And so to set up this one for C, we have the sine of 43 degrees equals the opposite, which for us, we don't know. We don't know EB. That's the opposite, so we're going to call it X. We have X over the hypotenuse, which is 14. Put, over, uh, put the sine uh, over 1, cross multiply here, so 1 times x, sine of 43 times 14, um, 1 times x gives you x, and the sine of, uh, the sine of 43 times 14, I believe, right? Yeah, sine of 43 times 14 gives you an answer of 9.55. Um, and that would be the same thing as that's the length of a b or e b sorry and I just call it x but that's our answer here for part c. My work for um, 185. I am going to clear the ink on this page and I will be able to squeeze in 10-186 um, in this video. So there goes that. Um, rewind the video if you want to see that work again. All right. Um, what we have here is a circle with two intersecting chords, um, and we've done this problem before. And really what we want to see these kind of problems as intersecting chord problems, we want to see them as similar triangles. And I'm going to make those triangles right now. So we have a triangle right here and a triangle right here. And the lines are a little longer because I just kind of stink at making them. But this triangle is similar to this triangle because they have angle-angle similarity. This angle here creates that arc length. This angle here creates that arc length. And we know that means those angles must be equal. Same thing, this angle must create this arc length, this angle must create this arc length, so they must be equal. Um, and again, um, if you have two pairs of equal angles, that means those triangles are similar. All right, um, again, along with that, I'm going to try to put this in a color here. This angle is the same as this angle, and this angle is the same as this angle. And so what that means is, if these are similar triangles, the 10 and the 4, this side length right here that represents 10, and this side length right here that represents four, those are the corresponding sides. So this is how I'm gonna set this problem up. All right, so I'm gonna do four over 10, four over 10, so the small side divided by the big side, and I'm gonna set that equal to the other corresponding sides, which is gonna be small divided by big. And so my small side is gonna be x, and my big side is gonna be x plus five. Now, I'm allowed to set these equal to each other because they're, we know they're similar triangles, all right? And if they're similar triangles, we are allowed to set up um, proportions like we have here. Um, a lot of times what we did, we would do like that 4 divided by 10 and then say that's our zoom factor and then use that to find a missing side. But since we're working in this algebraic realm where even if we knew our zoom factor, we couldn't necessarily use it because we don't know what x is. Uh, we have to set it up with equal proportions, and these again, these equal proportions can happen because they're similar triangles. Um, we just did this on the last problem. Uh, when you have two fractions set equal to each other, you're allowed to cross multiply. And so what we can do here is 10 times x and 4 times x plus 5. Remember going into advanced algebra next year, I know you have three months before that, um, but you can only cross multiply when you have two fractions set equal to each other. Cross multiplying doesn't work if you're multiplying fractions. Um, but anyway, we have 10 times x, which gives you 10x. And you have 4 times x plus 5. So 4 times x plus 5. I'm going to write it out like this first and then solve it. x plus 5. Remember, I do that because I want to make a note that we distribute in that 4. And so this becomes 10x equals 4x plus 20. I'm going to subtract over 4x to both sides, and I'm going to get 6x equals 20. And dividing both sides by 6 so that the 6 cancels out, I'm going to be left with that x. x equals 20 over 6, which reduces down to, if I wanted to put it in a decimal, 20 divided by 6 is 3.33 repeating. And there's my answer for 186. Um, again, really the idea here is to see, well, which sides correspond and then set up equal proportions and cross multiply. And I knew, again, that the 4 and the 10 were the corresponding side lengths that I was going to set up because those are the angles that were equal to each other. All right, I'll finish the last two problems on the next video.